Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Sir Spam 28 here bringing you some more World of Warships closed beta action. In this video, I'm going to take you through a couple of games in the U.S. destroyer, the Nicholas, it's the Tier 5 United States Navy destroyer. And what these videos are going to be showcasing is what I think are a pretty good use of the U.S. Navy destroyers um, and the tactics that you want to be employing um, when you're using these destroyers. So in this first game, taking a look at the... Uh, Loading screen here, it's on big race, pretty even teams, two carriers, two battleships, and three destroyers on each team. Um, pretty close to a mirror match. So on big race in a destroyer, um, where I like to go in destroyers is on that four, five, and six line. Kind of that area in that um, right angle cove and in between those four islands in that four, five, and six line area. Um, that's, uh, that's the playground for destroyers. Um, lots of cover along those islands, lots of narrow uh, channels for ships to be sailing through to hit with your torpedoes, and especially in U.S. destroyers with the short-range torpedoes, um, you want to take advantage of ambush tactics. You can't really do those long-range stealth torpedo uh, launch runs like you can in the Japanese destroyers. Um, you have to get up close and personal, so in U.S. destroyers, you need to be making use of islands um, to ambush um, your targets with your torpedoes and you'll see an example of that in this match but the other thing that US destroyers have going for them is their amazing main guns unlike the Japanese destroyers who might as well not even have main guns for as slow as they fire and especially as slow as they turn around the US destroyers and I chose to showcase the Nicholas in these matches because it's the first of the US destroyer that comes with the five inch guns and that's kind of the hallmark is those very rapid firing, very rapid churning, five inch guns, which allows you to actually tear other destroyers and light cruisers apart with your surface batteries. And that, I think, is the primary tactic of a US destroyer, is early in the game, seek out, engage, and destroy the other team's destroyers with your guns, especially if the other team has primarily Japanese destroyers. So you can see, um, the enemy destroyers kind of have the same idea as us, and our three of our destroyers came over here. All three of their destroyers came over here. Again, this is the destroyer playground on this map, the four, five, and six line. Now, I'm smoking here not necessarily for myself, but more for the team behind me, just to kind of overlap, cutting off vision if anything comes around that cove and comes through my allied smoke. And I'm going to go ahead and start opening up on targets of opportunity, the enemy destroyers that I, uh, I see. That destroyer handily gets taken out by a torpedo salvo, but we're about to lose a destroyer of our own. So I continue just to open up with my guns. And what you'll notice me doing um, is kind of turning in a circle in this area. And I'm doing that because I want to keep this big island in between me and the bulk of the enemy team. There's two cruisers and a battleship over there. If I go out into the open water, I'm guaranteed either dead or crippled. So I'm just kind of circling in this area um, keeping that hardcover in between me and the enemy team. Now, here's what I talk about ambush. I know that this cruiser is coming. I target him. I highlight him. I can see that he's coming this direction. Also, the mini map shows me that. I wait for my torpedo spread to clear the headland. Fire a wide spread. Wait a few seconds. Fire a narrow spread. And then turn back behind my previous smoke. Um, now, he's not going to have any time to react to those torpedoes. And that is how you use a US crew our US destroyers torpedoes Target one hit two three hit and cruiser dead Enemy cruiser destroyed. that that is how you successfully use a US destroyers torpedoes you have to ambush ships like that coming around islands using that cover not giving them time to react and more importantly not giving them time to shoot at you while you're making your torpedo run so while I wait for my torpedoes to reload, I'm just going to go ahead and open up on the uh, enemy destroyers. And you can just see how fast uh, these guns fire. Finally turns his broadside to me. Gives me some pretty good shots. So I'm just starting to put the paint on this guy. And it just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible how fast these 5-inch guns fire. Um, shooting AG to try to wreck modules and not open penetrate the destroyer. Um, with a 5-inch gun, shooting AP um, would work. You wouldn't over penetrate too bad. Um, but I like HE against destroyers with, with any caliber of gun. 
Um, now, the reason I didn't stay parallel and running with him was one, I was worried about his torpedo salvo, and two, there's another destroyer. So, you can see this enemy destroyer that I'm shooting at is zigzagging, and I've been zigzagging the same time too. He's not shooting at me, but his buddy is. So, I kind of straighten out for a little bit and just launch a speculative spread of torpedoes at the other destroyer that I'm not shooting at, just to try to take his attention off of shooting at me and put it onto evading those torpedoes to give me a little breathing time to continue my fire at this guy. Now, you can see how agile destroyers are. He's doing a pretty good job of evading my fire um, just by zigzagging, and I'm, I'm not doing the best job um, at, of, of, of gunnery by no means. Um, now, the problem also is that I'm running away from him and his buddy and zigzagging as well, so I only have two guns able to fire at him, and unfortunately, that caused this to this uh, carrier his life. Now, I honestly don't know what this carrier was doing here. I suppose he was kind of like running over to the corner of the map, you know, in like that uh, D1 area. But I, I don't, if he was just like where our other carrier was, he would have been fine. Those destroyers, it would have taken them another two, three minutes to get back there with me shooting at them the entire time. And it just, it wouldn't have worked out. Um, but unfortunately, that uh, that carrier is a little too far forward, so he does get taken out. But that uh, second enemy destroyer is dead, and now we're working on the third and last destroyer. Shooting at him while zigzagging. Go ahead and launch more torpedoes. They come off cooldown. Just, again, to try to make him think about uh, dodging the torpedoes instead of shooting at me. Or, or, if he stays in sniper view and stays shooting at me, which he is... He might not notice those torpedoes until it's too late. So it's kind of a, a case of damned if you do, damned if you don't for him. He's either going to focus on me um, and get hit by the torpedoes, or, which he does, or he was going to um, stop shooting at me to focus on dodging those torpedoes. Now, unfortunately, um, his parting shot is a Citadel hit on me, so it takes off most of my health. Which, eh, doesn't make me feel very good. But all three of their destroyers are down. And you can also see from earlier in that ambush, I also was able to sink one of their cruisers. So this uh, this attack on this side that they mounted up the 4, 5, and 6 line has been completely repelled. Um, for the loss of just one destroyer and one of our aircraft carriers that wandered a bit too far forward. So pretty good odds. And that has allowed our team on the other flank um, to, to do pretty well. Um, to kind of go even right now, they're actually about to break through on that side. Um, so that's really kind of what you need to do in a U.S. destroyer, is, is use your rapid-firing guns to engage and destroy the enemy light ships. And if you see a target of opportunity, if you see an ambush situation, that's going to allow you to use your torpedoes. That's when you want to use them. That's primarily how I use my torpedoes. Either in an ambush situation, as an enemy is coming around an island, or um, as kind of scare tactics or just speculative torpedo spreads at enemy cruisers and destroyers to try to get them to churn, try to get them to, to, to focus on the torpedoes instead of focusing on shooting at me. Because um, that's really kind of the problem with the, with the U.S. destroyers is... Your torpedoes, uh, for a long time, only have a 5.5 kilometer range, and your detectability range um, is, is higher than that. And even when you get the 7 kilometer torpedoes, and even the 10 kilometer torpedoes at the very highest tiers of the destroyers, uh, your surface detectability is still only maybe at most a couple of kilometers uh, less than that. So it's, it's a fine line you have to walk as a U.S. destroyer if you want to be making torpedo runs against big ships in open water. Um, so really kind of use the terrain features to your advantage. Use the islands. Um, keep yourself in cover from the enemy guns and do work. Again, at the beginning of this match, you can see how I was just kind of making circles behind that island so I wouldn't expose myself to the fire from the enemy cruisers and battleships. And that's uh, what you want to be looking to do. So as the match continues, we've kind of broken through on all fronts. They're down to this, this cruiser and their two carriers. And we're closing in for the kill. 
I popped smoke just to kind of mask me, but then I noticed this cruiser is focusing on the other cruisers, so I don't really have to worry, and I can just start going to town. And you can see, even against a light cruiser, and even still just having HE loaded, um, when I hit this guy, like, I'm able to, to do a pretty substantial amount of damage. Like, the individual shells aren't doing big numbers by any means, but the volume of fire that you're able to put out um, just allows you to keep ticking away, keep ticking away, keep ticking away at the enemy. And, you know, it's, it's 300 here, 500 there, 1,500 here if you get, you know, lucky and get a good hit. Um, plus, if you're shooting HE, you're usually setting targets on fire. Um, so it's, 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 your, your guns are pretty respectable. I mean, they're only five inches. You're not gonna, you know, worry a battleship in a surface engagement by any stretch of the imagination. But U.S. destroyers have that capability, have that flexibility, um, to not just rely on their torpedoes, which is good, because as you go up the tiers, um, on both the US and Japanese side, uh, the torpedo reload timers get higher and higher and higher to the point where at the highest tiers, you're looking at uh, a minute and a half between torpedo salvos, um, if not slower. Of course, that's barring any uh, upgrades or uh, crew skills that you have. Um, and that's kind of the thing. As uh, you go up the tiers on the US side, um, both the surface guns and the AA on the destroyers keep getting better and better. Whereas on the Japanese side, it really doesn't. Um, the only thing that really gets better is your torpedoes. You know, you get the fabled long lance torpedoes and all that. So anyway, um, closing out on this carrier, last carrier alive. Um, still pounding them with the guns, launched a torpedo salvo, but this is kind of interesting. Uh, I load AP. For the last salvo, and right as the torpedo's about to hit, I actually get a citadel to finish him off, and I don't get my... The torpedoes don't kill him, but my guns do. So, that's, uh, the U.S. destroyers, um, the guns are the, are the primary damage dealers, and you can kind of see that, and you can see this, it's a pretty good match for me, 100 and, or 1,700 experience, 140,000 credits, so if you look at the team score, uh, top of the team, um, did a lot of damage, um, was able to use those torpedoes pretty effectively, but again, only only uh, hit three torpedoes, but was able to do a respectable amount of damage with the guns. More damage with the guns, counting HE and AP, um, than with my torpedoes in that match, and finished top of the team. So you don't have to rely on your torpedoes in a US destroyer. Now going into the second match, same map, big race. This time we're starting on the opposite side of where we were before but I'm still gonna go to the exact same place, kind of destroyer alley. Um, because I know, A, that's probably where my destroyers are gonna go, so I wanna back them up. And B, that's more than likely where the enemy destroyers are gonna go, and that's who I wanna be killing at the beginning of the game. Take out the enemy destroyers with their surface guns, with your torpedoes, and then your capital ships um, find their lives get a lot easier when they don't have to worry about their flanks being exposed and, and having Japanese destroyers uh, come in and ruin their day with uh, a giant torpedo salvo from like eight kilometers out. Um, so it, it's really, really helpful to your team um, to be looking for those opportunities to take out the enemy uh, light ships as well. So as we head in here, um, I'm going to, again, follow my destroyers in, and that's a typical wolf pack tactic. We're not in a platoon or anything, obviously, or a fleet. Um, but just kind of sticking together to amplify our firepower and we can already see that the first enemy destroyer has been spotted and he's coming in and with him is likely to be his buddies again same as last game um, three destroyers per team and uh, this time there's only one carrier per team but three battleships per team so again a pretty pretty nice mirrored match matchmaker wasn't going too crazy and in both of these uh, matches, they were Tier 5 matches, so my Tier 5 Nicholas, um, really good matchmaking. Um, and that, you know, that was also uh, a factor in why I was able to do so well in these games. But that's not the only factor. I think the decision making and the tactics um, comes into play as well. So you can see, kind of 
Same old, same old, just opening up on the enemy destroyers. Um, I usually uh, don't like to be the first one in, because that's what happens if you're the first one in. You uh, get torpedoed to death, so I like to hang back a little bit, you know, keep it at a quarter half speed. Uh, let the other destroyers go forward. If they want to be reckless and just charge, that's fine. Um, kind of run around here, not that big of a deal. Um, just because that other destroyer kind of already turned around. Now, I fire that narrow spread just in that general direction to uh, dissuade him from coming back around and coming at me as I'm backing up. So we're going to go ahead and get off this island and continue on our merry way. Um, now, that cruiser is something that we don't want to mess with. So I'm going to try to get in cover ASAP and out of his gun sight because as soon as I come around this corner to the left I'm probably gonna be spotted by their destroyers which means that that cruiser is then gonna have uh, shots at me so looking at this destroyer I can see that he is coming around so I'm gonna kind of ambush tactics again but then I decide that I wanted to hold on to my torpedoes because I could see that he was turning to starboard and turning out of range of my torpedo spread. So I just look for the guns, but don't get them. Then, hey, here's this destroyer again. He goes ahead and runs aground on this little spit, um, which is really easy for me. I think he kind of gave up at this point. He could have launched torpedoes at me if he wanted to, um, but he didn't, which I'm grateful sunk. for. I might have been able to uh, avoid them. I probably would have been able to avoid them anyway. Um, but unfortunately, he has lit me up. I'm um, being that close to me. So that means that I'm taking fire from the enemy destroyer and the enemy cruiser, which is bad. So you can see me try to zigzag, take evasive action, and um, most importantly, get this island in between me and that cruiser. Um, now what I'm going to do, because he's lost the line of sight of me, so he, I, I've dropped off of his map, and he's probably thinking that I'm steaming straight ahead. I, I'm still on the same course that I was. But I'm actually going to go ahead and turn around and uh, try to do another ambush. Because if he is going to keep coming around this island, I'm going to launch torpedoes at him. Um, and I know this is uh, pretty safe. So I go ahead and launch some speculative torpedoes his way as I continue my circle and get back behind the island and out of his line of fire. Now, the direction that he's going, and the way that he's turning, and the distance that he was, uh, those torpedoes probably weren't going to hit. But, hey, they were up, they were there, might as well go for it, you know? Um, and now I can see that he's really not facing me, and he's engaging another target off to his right, our other destroyer. So, uh, that allows me just to start to open up on him uh, with the surface guns. Um, scored a hit, took out uh, a gun, uh, I believe it caught him on fire. Um, so, you know, all sorts of good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my aim to the enemy destroyer, as I want to take him out. He's a priority target for me. Uh, take out the destroyers before the cruisers. Um, same, same target selection when you're in a cruiser. You want to take out the enemy destroyers first. Uh, because those little buggers really cause your carriers and your battleships headaches. So I'll just keep my fire up. He's in and out of the smoke. Um, so rather than take speculative shots at him, I switch my fire back to the cruiser. And you can see that we've kind of broken through the middle here. Uh, their main fleet is kind of clustered up in that uh, like A9 area, B9 area. Um, that allowed our, our fleet to kind of break through the middle and on this left side. Um, as we kind of turned around their destroyers that were coming in um, and you know, killed, killed a lot of them, killed two of them, and then turned around the last one. And then we take out their last destroyer there, and as you can see, we've definitely broken through. Um, there's a battleship that we have that steams right up the middle, and a cruiser that's in the enemy uh, cap circle. So that's uh, great for us. So now I go ahead and launch torpedoes at that battleship, and that is another one of those ambush situations where he's coming around that island, I'm on this side of the island, I launch my torpedoes at him, and then I'm able to turn and get uh, 
kind of hardcover in between me and him. I launch more torpedoes at him, but again, at this extreme range, these torpedoes only have a 5.5 kilometer range. Um, so I'm not expecting these to, to do anything. Um, other than maybe scare him, maybe take, uh, you know, the time to churn his ship, maybe not get such a great uh, firing solution. Or, you know, not be firing at all while he's focused on maneuvering. Um, unfortunately, uh, nothing really happens. Those look like they might be on target, but I think they're gonna peter out before they hit him. So I go ahead and uh, stay focused on the cruiser behind him um, as I'm kind of playing in the smoke. And uh, just waiting to see what happens with those torpedoes, but uh, they for sure missed. So, looking at the map, we've got two battleships and two cruisers steaming forward to meet their battleship and cruiser in their cap. And I'm going to go ahead and work on that cruiser with my surface guns. Even at this range, you can still get good hits, as demonstrated. He didn't have that much health left, but, uh, you know. So now, off to my port side. Um, just looking at the minimap, we have that situation fairly in hand. I'm confident that my team, the numbers involved, um, should be able to clean that up, and we are winning this match. Um, so rather than turn to port and steam over there and, and fuff about with all that, um, I'm looking at what they have coming for reinforcement. These two battleships back here. And I'm going to see if I can't ruin their day before they get to the fight and have a chance to, um, you know, turn the odds a little more in the enemy team's favor. Um, and that's kind of a tactical decision. That's keep one eye on the mini map um, and see what the priority target's going to be and where you're going to be needed and where you're going to be doing the most good. As a destroyer that's fast and maneuverable, um, I'm able to close and, uh, start ruining people's days on this side of the map um, so off the starboard off the port side rather um, some more speculative torpedoes those were very uh, very long range so I don't expect those to hit again just kind of there um, but there's another battleship and he is much closer to this island than the last guy was so I am going to try to do another ambush situation. Now, the thing is, see, here's the thing. He knows I'm here. That carrier is spotting me. But he can't do a goddamn thing about it because I am just circling behind this island waiting for him to clear the headland. And as you can see, um, looking back at the minimap in their cap situation, uh, they have handily uh, cleaned up. So now there's just those two battleships and the carrier over here that's left. So I go ahead and launch those torpedoes as he clears the headland. Um, I pop a smoke screen and then I actually, um, I'm going away from him. So the smoke's actually behind me, so he can't see me at all. He took some speculative shots at where he thought I was gonna be, but those were just blind shots. Um, so you can see kind of the impact here. Um, Confirmed penetration. If you, again, use those ambush tactics, uh, you're able to get real, real good hits. Um, and now he's kind of going to do the same thing again. Um, so I slowed down a little bit. I'm waiting to see if he's going to get in range of my torpedoes at all. Again, 5.5 is the magic number. But it doesn't look like he's going to be. So I just launched some speculative torpedoes anyway. And at this point, he should be able to spot me but he is more preoccupied with our battleships and cruisers that are uh, off of his port side in their, or near their cap. So, my ambush uh, abilities on that battleship is pretty much done. He's far enough away from these islands um, that to make a run at him and get torpedoes off, even though he's stuck on the border, um, is tantamount to suicide at this point. So. Parting gifts, uh, just start to shoot some HE at him, and I'm going to slip him behind him, 
and go after their carrier. Now, eight to five, they've only got three ships left, and that battleship's dead. So now they've only got two ships left. This game's in the bag. Um, but, again, just practicing your target selection. I don't want to charge this guy, um, because he can just turn one primary battery, or his secondary just can open up, and, you know, one shot from those even could kill me before I close to that, uh, good, like, four kilometer range to get accurate torpedoes on. So, I just, uh, go ahead and open up with the surface batteries, and you can see, again, that rate of fire, even against a battleship shooting AG, uh, just able to, you know, take out modules, take out uh, secondary guns, take out AA guns, set them on fire, do all sorts of, of lovely things. And now I just turn my attention to this carrier that I've been steaming towards the entire time. Um, trying to get another Citadel hit with the AP, but this time, the torpedoes do actually finish him we off. Sunk an enemy aircraft carrier. So, last game, uh, finished off the carrier with my guns shooting AP. Uh, this, this game, the torpedoes were able to beat my shells to the target. And, uh, torpedoes get the kill. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, circle back around. Uh, might as well try to get some more damage done. May even get lucky and, you know, get the, the killing blow on this battleship. Who knows? Uh, 10 to 5, he's the last remaining, so we obviously have this game won. Uh, still plenty of time left to cap if somehow we don't sink him. I don't know how that situation could ever arise, but... Anyway, uh, turn back around, start heading in, get in the gun range, and just uh, start opening up with the HE again. And again, just to drill in the point, look at how fast these guns fire. And again, uh, I'm kind of uh, T on to him, so I'm only able to fire my forward batteries. But even still, just with the two shells, just the rate of fire is, is crazy. I love, I love these guns. I love these U.S. destroyers. Same thing with the U.S. cruisers. It's just all about that volume of fire for me. So I'm not a very big battleship guy. They just shoot way too slow. Anyway, don't get the last hit. Our team takes him out. Um, and that's the game. So once again, pretty good game. 149,000 credits. 1,731 experience. Once again, finish top of the team. Um, again, in a destroyer. Um, using those torpedoes in ambush situations. But... More importantly, uh, keeping your gun singing and going after the priority targets, mainly the enemy team's destroyers. Uh, this game, you can see the torpedoes got six hits, did significantly more damage um, than my surface shells, but I did get to ambush um, more ships in this game than in the last one. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it gives you uh, some insight into how to use your U.S. destroyers. Remember, uh, your guns are fantastic, so uh, do not neglect to use them. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.